let's check out this Duramax 3.0 from a maintenance perspective. We're going to be looking at that and a few other first thoughts on this uh, turbo six-cylinder inline diesel engine uh, and Silverado 1500 pickup. Popping the hood, one of the first things I noticed was uh, the battery's kind of buried. Uh, it does have easy access for jump starting, just a single battery. Uh, but under this cover plate, uh, there's kind of a lot going on. Uh, but it gets simple as you look at it. There's kind of a 12 volt bus bar that supplies voltage to several circuits. And uh, it's better that's on top of the battery than under the battery for acidic corrosion and that kind of thing. Um, but as you see, there's a lot there, but it gets, it gets simpler. Um, this here is the glow plug controller. So if I were going to try to take the battery out, I imagine you'd take out these bolts um, and then that bracket and controller should peel out of the way. And then you still got this thing stuck on there, so I think you'd want to pull off uh, that bolt for that bus bar plate and then the uh, battery positive terminal. And then there's uh, some tabs here, and once you got those peeled back, it should just kind of bend out of the way and let you have access to the battery. Here's the main engine compartment fuse block where most of the fuses and relays and stuff are at. There's also some aux uh, an auxiliary fuse block over on the driver's side. Um, they're all easy to get at. Uh, there's just quite a few of them, so you'd want to use your owner's manual to see uh, where you're going to go hunting and looking. So this one's on the driver's side, instrument panel. Got some spare fuses there, another one over on the passenger side. And then... Um, Looking back at the engine, we're going to take out this um, bolt here with a 10 millimeter socket, take off the oil fill plug, and then we get a look at the intercooler. Uh, you can also uh, see the turbo and the def injector highlighted there. Um, all the exhaust routes out the exhaust manifold and goes through the turbo. Um, and that expanding flowing air spins a turbine wheel, and then uh, that exhaust then departs and travels on down the exhaust system through the various catalytic converters and whatnot for emissions. On the other side, you got cool air coming in through the air box and being charged from uh, the other side of the turbo on the compressor wheel, and that charge is varied through uh, modular or movable veins on an actuator that varies the charge. Um, that air is then directed through the intercooler to be cooled and made more dense and, and whatnot, and then it goes to the intake manifold, which also has variable ports. Uh, the intercooler has its own surge or overflow tank, um, independent of the engine one, but they do share the same radiator. Uh, here's the air intake uh, to the air box, goes into the bottom of the air box where it's then filtered and sent on down the ductwork to the uh, charge side of the, of the turbo. I'm going to show you what it's like to service the air filter on this. There's three screws, 516 driver is my preferred method over a screwdriver. And then uh, you peel that up, it gives you plenty of space to, to get in there and take the filter in and out. So I was happy with how easy the air filter was to do. Um, and then you'll notice that all the fluids are on the driver's side of the pickup. Here's the engine oil. Um, it's got a dipstick, a cable style. I like those. Um, no transmission dipstick. We'll see how you check transmission fluid when we get underneath. Uh, brake fluid hiding back there. That takes dot four. It has a higher temperature rating. Um, then dot three, uh, windshield washer reservoir, uh, your coolant tanks, uh, and then you'll notice that there's no um, power steering uh, reservoir. This has electronic power steering, uh, which is what everybody seems to be going to. It's, uh, you know, one less thing that can leak, I guess. Uh, looking underneath of it, uh, the oil filter and drain plug are easy to get at. Um, doesn't drain onto anything. The cross member is out of the way. The pan itself has, is aluminum but has a steel insert for the drain plug. This 10L80 10 speed transmission is really long. Um, I do like how the uh, all the bolts are accessible to access the transmission filter without any cross members or exhaust in the way. There's where you're going to check it and fill it. It takes De Dextron Ultra low viscosity fluid. Uh, you can take that out with an 8 millimeter hex bit and tighten it back up. It looks like a real treat to get fluid in and out of there. I'd probably be using some kind of bucket pump to pump fluid in. The transfer case uh, takes the same tool, an 8 millimeter hex, and you're looking at 1.6 quarts of deck 6 for that. The rear uh, differential, uh, there's some variations there you can look in the specs, but you got to take off the rear pan to dump it, and then the 3 8 ratchet will give you access to fill it up again. Taking off this front plastic uh, skid 
plate as well as the aluminum one. Uh, that lets us get a look at the front differential. Um, that's not going to be serviced by pulling off the pan unless you take out the front differential. I'd be using a top sider or some kind of suction pump to pull the fluid out of there just because I like easy. Here's electronic power steering rack uh, there by the front differential giving you a look at this drive shaft that looks different than they used to uh, for the transfer case up to the front differential. It now has an axle instead of U-joints like they've had in the past. Uh, the, the, the rear drive shaft is still the same. Here's the fuel filter. It's the same fuel filter assembly they're using on uh, the Duramax 6.6. Here I'm showing you that this cross member comes out easily to drop the transmission or pull it back, which is important because at 150,000 miles, this vehicle uh, has a wet belt oil pump um, drive belt that you have to replace. That's the minimum time is 150,000 miles. They say it could go a lot longer than that, but uh, you got to pull the transmission back, and I imagine. Uh, you know you're looking somewhere from six to you know however much dealers want to charge to have you service that if you had them do it but that transmission comes out easily on its own here I'm showing you all the suspension components they're all easy to get at sway bar links um, tie rod ends control arms ball joints uh, they're all easy to do here's a look at the brake wear indicator on the driver's side here's a look at the rear exhaust it's not a true dual exhaust on a straight six with a single exhaust manifold so they come together on the front side of the spare tire. Following the exhaust up uh, the line, you got a downstream O2 sensor post catalytic converter, and then you got an upstream one there. And then it looks like there's one up on top by the turbo as well, uh, right as it's coming out of the turbo. These little louvers regulate the airflow through the radiator for a quick warm up. Uh, the radiator doesn't have a pet cock, but it does have an easily accessible hose to drain it. This is the aluminum and plastic skid plates. Uh, the only still ones that transfer case. Um, so putting that back on, 13 millimeter, half inch, and then there's a little hose that clips onto that plastic skid shield. Um, the def on this, um, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, takes 5.3 gallons uh, to fill it. This one was pretty low, and we had about one chiclet or one bar left on the indicator. And uh, so I put in a tank there, a couple of gallons, and now it's over half, half full there. Um, now I'm just kind of playing with the truck a little bit. Um, I like the interface on Chevy's. Um, here's the, the cluster doing its gauge sweep and self-test. Um, before starting, the glow plugs hardly run at all, um, even in really cold. It was about 25 degrees a day I shot that picture. The passing gear isn't super great as far as speed in the turbo. Uh, but it does have a really good low end off the line uh, pep in my opinion. I like this rear backup camera while you're driving to look at your trailer or who's tailgating you. Um, I like the Sirius XM interface here. I like that the temperature controls and other controls pop up on the main display as you work them. Um, I just like Chevy's interface. I've always had. They, uh, I like how it, as a driver you, you get to interact with the vehicle. It's really simple and intuitive. The 120 volt charger you got to manually toggle on and off. Then with the automatic start stop feature I was curious how heavy duty the starter was and uh, how hard it would be to get at uh, for replacing. I looked all over underneath this thing on both sides of the engine back by the transmission and couldn't find it which leads me to guess that it's front mounted. Um, so I'm kind of looking at what we got on the front of the engine here and uh, this is the one I'm guessing so if you know feel free to comment below. And then just checking out the noise level, these diesels, you know, are super quiet, and this one's no exception. Um, I'll compare it here to my 2011 Silverado here in a second. So here's the 5.3 and, you know, almost exact same noise other than I think the diesel sounds cooler. At the tailpipe, it's really quiet. It's really quiet with the door open, even quieter with the door closed. The 5.3 was quieter in park at idle, um, but the Duramax was quieter at road speed, even than my Toyota Camry seeing here. Um, another cool thing about this is I never got less than 20 miles a gallon playing around in it, stomping on it. Um, really great mileage, and with the turbo, you get a nice flat torque curve through a broad range of RPM. Starts really low up through the higher RPMs, you get almost peak torque, so good pulling power throughout. Uh, really impressed with this pickup, how it drives, love the mileage. I think it's a great all-around truck. Hope you found this useful and that you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.